I'm delighted to send my best wishes to everyone involved in the centenary celebrations of World Scouting. To reach 100 years is always an achievement for any organization, but to do so in such good health and with such continued relevance as the scouting movement shows deserves a massive celebration. And I know that's what's planned for 2007, which promises to be a memorable year in the history of scouting here in the UK and across the world. What is extraordinary is that from the vision of one man has grown an international movement of 28 million members in over 200 countries. The challenges and opportunities for young people have changed enormously, of course, over the last hundred years. But what's been so impressive is how the scouting movement has constantly evolved to ensure it continues both to engage and enthuse youngsters and then help to equip them with the skills and the attitudes needed to be good, active and responsible citizens. Throughout your history, you have always looked to the future. In your concern for the environment, for example, and in your determination to break down barriers between cultures and countries, scouting has blazed a trail where others now follow. So I want to send my very best wishes to everyone involved with scouting and a warm welcome to the many people from all over the world who will be coming to the UK to join in the celebrations over the months ahead. Thank you. For nearly 100 years, Boy Scouts have set a high standard of service and duty to God and country. Millions of Americans have pledged a Scout Oath. On my honor, I'll do my best. And through the generations, Scouts have made America a stronger and better nation. Scouts have excelled in fields from science to business to education to the arts. Scouts have earned Olympic gold medals, Nobel Prizes, and Academy Awards. More than half of the current members of the United States Congress participated in the Scouts. One of the Capitol's most famous Scouts is President Gerald Ford. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank the Boy Scouts for serving on the front lines of America's armies of compassion. My scouting days helped me to cope with adversity. So um, I've been pulled out of the sea six times by helicopters uh, when my balloons and boats either sank or crashed. Um, Ended up in the Arctic uh, when I was actually aiming from Japan to land in Los Angeles. Missed it by three and a half thousand miles. Um, it was mi minus 60 degrees, so I had to, you know, worry about building an igloo and surviving in, in, in um, with clothes that were, were meant to be for sunny climbs and not for Arctic climbs. Um, and I suspect that, you know, without without my, you know, scouting background, uh, it would have been that much more difficult to have survived um, these adventures. Scouting was definitely the um, best part of my time at school. Um, uh, it got me away from the desk, it got me outside, um, it got me doing useful, practical, fun things. Um, and I think it taught me a hell of a lot more than, than school ever taught me. Um, and um, if I could have my school days again, it would have to be uh, scouting days. The first thing a good school should do is break, it, break the desks and not have people stuck behind desks, you know, for... for um, all those wonderful years of their lives, and you know, I think the more, the more they can do in in you know in real society, the better. The more they can be taught about real things, the better. Um, and scouting, you know, not only taught you about real things, but it was also great fun. And um, school days should be fun. Scouting has a fantastic future. Um, I learnt a lot, and I don't think I could have done without it. The essential element is getting together with kids of your own age uh, with a common purpose uh, and a sense of obligation really and companionship uh, and you learn these various things which are certainly useful I mean time knots is useful but that's not what scouting about scouting is about something much more profound than that camps were the important thing that was what it was all about um, we went on camps at least once or twice a year um, and, um, and that was where you really learned about things and you learned how to cook. You know, I didn't learn to cook at home. <laughs> I don't, can't cook much now. But I certainly had, knew how to get on in a tent. I knew how to look after myself. 
I suppose I uh, perhaps have spent more time out in the wild than, than many another person and therefore these things do actually come in handy. Um, but they are handy. And, and I'm, I'm staggered when I find people that simply don't know how to do simple practical things, which I first learned to do in the Scouts. I loved it. I really loved being a Boy Scout. Um, I love the knots. I love the camping, I love making things, I love getting badges, all those proficiency badges, you know, cycling, all sorts of things like that, outdoor cooking. I spent all my time building mud ovens in the garden, I seem to remember. I thought it was fantastic, I really, really loved it. The thing about the Scouts which I thought was so exciting, which I think must still be exciting, is this opportunity to do things, to make things, to discover things to explore the natural world and the built world um, with a sense of social purpose and you know I think that's I think that's a really good thing I, I can't see that anybody people might say it's it's an old-fashioned idiom I suppose it is old-fashioned um, but that doesn't mean it's not actually rather attractive and rather worthwhile some years ago I was in in Lebanon reporting the civil war there and we went to a town called Tripoli in the north of Lebanon where there was the most ferocious firefight going on. And during a ceasefire, we got into the center of the town. And then the ceasefire broke while we were there. And the most tremendous amount of ordnance, machine gun fire and so on started pouring into the town. And it became a problem as to how to get out. I was there with a cameraman and a producer. And there was an ambulance going, taking out some wounded people. And we asked if we could get a lift in the back of it. We climbed into the back of the ambulance. Uh, and there were two guys in the front. The front passenger seat had been removed. The driver sat down incredibly low over the steering wheel, just peering out over the top of it. And he said, you know, hold on tight. He revved up the engine and we screamed around this corner. The moment we came around the corner, people opened fire on us. And there were bullets literally passing through the, through the ambulance. How none of us was shot, I don't know. But I mean, one certainly burned a mark across the back of my jeans. It was absolutely terrifying. And they were doing this every day, in and out, in and out, in and out with wounded people. Finally the ambulance drew up. We got out, outside the uh, fire, firing zone. And uh, we went into what I instantly recognized, because I think they're probably the same the whole world over. It was a scout hut. And I said, you know, where are we? And they said, it's the scout hut. I said, I can see that. What are we doing here? And he said, we're scouts. And these guys were, these guys were scouts. I would have guessed they were early 20s, which struck me as slightly old for a scout, but early 20s, and they were running in and out every day, running an ambulance service. And I thought, I was really, really impressed. To me, it was how to set fire to things. I've done that all my life. I started there. I remember once setting fire to the local farmer's field. But luckily, there were so many Boy Scouts who were well trained in fire training that we got it under control very quickly. But it could have been a disaster. But actually, you just learn just to have fun around the campfire. I think eating around the campfire is all about camaraderie. It's all about getting mucky and enjoying yourself and having loads and loads of fun. Well, I think the one thing for scouting did for me was actually make me enjoy the outdoors because I love the outdoors. Nowadays, I'll kick my kids out old-fashioned style after breakfast, tell them to get on with it. Go out there, go into the woods, have a bit of fun, learn things, try to make things yourselves. I mean, I was taught knots. I was I'm not very good at them now. I have to say, taught knots, taught all sorts of things, woodwork, whittling and things like that. The things you just did in the countryside. And I think, to me, we need much more of children outside instead of stuck in front of a computer. Another thing the Scout Movement taught me was a, a, a very big respect for animals. And I think if you respect animals, I've got loads of pets now, and I encourage my children with the pets and the chickens and the ducks and dogs and cats. And if, they, if they respect animals, they're much more likely to respect human beings. But I think the main benefits to me of the Scouting Movement is getting kids off the street for one thing, but probably the main thing is actually the camaraderie. Learning to respect the human beings that are around you, learning to make mates, good friends, learning a few skills on the way, generally having a bit of fun. And you know, there's so much to offer. The Scout Movement teaches you so much. So people shouldn't think of it as an outdated 
um, club if you want. Think of it as a modern club that's moved forward with the times and it's still got a lot to offer. I'm a professional adventurer, explorer, whatever you like to call it, but I go off to the Amazon Borneo and I have to survive off my wits. And you could say that this all began age 10, 12, that sort of age, as a scout when I first learned to rub two sticks together literally and learned to handle a compass for the first time. These are things I still do now and it all began way, way back just as a child in the Boy Scout movement. My main memory is being an enthusiastic little cub scout and I was always keen on getting all those badges up and down, I think it was my left arm and um, I had to learn to swim and I had to learn to tie knots and I had to make a phone call for some reason in case of emergency because I was only probably 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, but the main thing was just sitting around that campfire. So my dad was a test pilot and he was always having adventures in Africa testing his aircraft and I wanted to be a sort of explorer and I suppose being a Cub Scout this was my first chance. I could get out into the woods and it was only in Buckinghamshire and suburbia really but it didn't really matter because we were just out in the open air looking at the stars and there was Halley's Comet one day and we had to find out which one it was with a little chart. I remember that. And it was just exciting and it was our thing. It was nothing to do with mum and dad or my brother. It was us, the, the pack itself. And uh, that was just great. Sometimes I would be left alone in the Amazon and Borneo and I'd be struggling for my life. And just knowing that I've done the same sort of disciplines time and time again, even as a little boy, learning to uh, make a campfire. These things are absolutely basic to survival. And if they come naturally to you, that is very, very important. And these things did become naturally to me because I'd been doing it since I was a little boy. And so I think in a small way, uh, I was able to survive very, very real dangers through this sort of discipline that I learned so young. For some people, I think scouting is just about meeting other kids. But for me, it was about climbing trees and getting across rivers with ropes and just getting out there and... That's what scouting really is all about. It's all about embracing the world and all that it's got to offer. Once upon a time, I was a Jewish kid growing up live and alone in an all Gentile neighborhood. And mostly in school, I experienced exclusion from many other kids my age who only knew what a Jew was from what their parents told them, what their friends said, or popular negative stereotypes. So when I joined the Boy Scouts of America, I felt that I had found a safe haven away from all the teasing and all the taunting. We're, we were all from very different areas in, in my hometown, so that there were, there were Asian Scouts, there were African American Scouts, there were several Native American Scouts, and we all lived and we all achieved together. And I even became an Eagle Scout, which made my parents so very proud of me. Uh, but for me, the greatest value of scouting was that scouting created opportunities for me to become proud of myself. And it's done this for tens of thousands of boys. And maybe most importantly, it was through the Boy Scouts of America uh, it, as I was trying out for a merit badge in photography that I actually discovered my passion for filmmaking. That's exactly how I got started. <laughs> Scouting gave me an amazing opportunity and it was the beginning of my personal yellow brick road. Presenting kids' wildlife programs, like the Really Wild Show, uh, I've done a lot of things that really I hadn't done with wild animals until, since I was you know, in the scouts. So things like uh, going after the tracks of animals, finding the spore of animals, taking apart owl pellets, beating bushes to get the kind of the bugs that live in them. These were things that I hadn't done really since I was a real youngster in the cubs. You know, that was, that was the sort of things that we used to do to get our badges. There are certainly things that I did for the first time as a cub and as a scout that now are absolutely central parts of my life. Going out, 
camping out, you know, going on big expeditions, climbing, mountaineering now is, you know, one of the, the, the foremost passions of my life and the first time I ever climbed on rock was as a scout. Uh, all these things, they certainly introduced interest to me that later on I, I built on in my life. And I think that that's a massive part, particularly for, we have a really, really urban population now. Um, thousands and thousands of kids that never get the chance to go outside and do all these active things in the environment are given that chance through, through the Scouting uh, Association. And I think that that's a really, really important thing now more than ever. The local clergyman, the local reverend, actually ran the, the scout troop I was in, which was, and I was the, in the end, I became the patrol leader of the Dove Patrol. You know, I obviously was very, very keen on getting my various badges you could get, you know, the woodworker's badge and the, and the you know, leather badge, and so I can't remember them all now. But uh, yes, it was a, a, a very nice time. We used to go on camping t on trips, you know, and, and, which I liked, and I think it's very nice that you get to know the guys quite well, you mess in and so on. I, I think it's a good thing. I learned how to, how to how to, sing, how to you know, get my fingers together and I can't do it with the right hand, I can do it with my left hand and so I, I, had, to, I had to prepare my fingers to do the scout salute with the right hand but I can manage it with the left so that's something I learnt. No, I, th I think, uh, I think it, it gave me a, a good, you know, it gave me a good start on life actually. I think if you're a boy scout, you know, it kept you off the streets so to speak and, and I think it was a good thing. At the moment, I'm um, doing a lot of rock climbing and ice climbing. And over 40 years, I've done climbing now and then and all the rest of it. And the first thing you learn is to make sure that the knots that you tie are secure because people will die if the knots are wrong. Unfortunately, I've got a bad memory. And if a few months have gone by since the last knot tying session, I will not remember them. I will get them wrong with one life saving exception. And that is that when I was a Boy Scout, way back yonder, I learnt the reef knot, left over right and right over left. That is the opposite to a granny. So that when you need to untie it, you can untie the reef and you cannot untie the granny. And that's vital. So I thank the Boy Scouts for that, as well as many happy days that I had on weekends and so on. Well, 10 years of age and I became an Air Scout, the first Belmont Troop. And it really opened my eyes to the countryside round about. I mean, with wartime London, you couldn't travel very far, but there was the Scouts and they, you were a tenderfoot and you learned not just about um, woodcraft and things, but you learned about how to live with people. You camped on farmers' um, land and there was always a gamekeeper and the farmer who would take you around and show you uh, the wildlife. And we had to virtually live off the land. In fact, we caught rabbits and hedgehogs. And we, yeah, there wasn't, you, you had to have um, ration cards in those days. It was much easier to feed off the land. We learned how to guzzle trout, to actually tickle trout and lift them out. Of, we don't do those things in scouting these days. So it really made David Bellamy what David Bellamy became, someone who totally impassioned about the wildlife and the farming aspect of wildlife.